Are you interested in learning about a distant celestial object in the far reaches of our solar system on the threshold of deep space? Do you want to see another world, many of whose phenomena defy rational explanation and understanding? Then get ready for a long journey, because the chosen celestial body is located millions of kilometers from Earth. Welcome to Amazing Triton, Neptune's most famous moon. Due to its considerable remoteness, very few probes have studied Triton in the entire history of astronautics. To be more precise, only Voyager 2 has flown past this celestial object. That happened back in 1989 as part of a transit journey past Neptune, the parent planet of the icy moon. Here's the first photo of Triton, obtained from the Voyager spacecraft. The image is singular and exceptional, as the Earth had never before received anything quite like it, especially from such an enormously distant locale. So, what exactly is it, this cold and nearly inaccessible world Triton? Despite the short meeting, Voyager 2 discovered a number of unusual phenomena on the celestial body, for which modern science has not yet given intelligible explanations. As mentioned previously, this Neptunian satellite was revealed to the world in all its glory by the legendary Voyager 2 probe. It's noteworthy that Triton was the last object seen by Voyager 2 in the outer solar system before the spacecraft crossed its borders into the farther reaches. Unfortunately, the probe was able to capture this mosaic of images of only one of the hemispheres, the one facing Neptune at the time. The craft's short transit time through the Neptunian system simply didn't allow for more. From first glance at the numerous photos, it became clear the Moon is one of the few geologically active objects within the outer solar system, and its surface is relatively young, its age not exceeding 100 million years. Unlike most solar system moons, Triton rotates counterclockwise and takes the place as the seventh largest of all moons in a relatively close environment. It's generally assumed that this celestial body is an alien to this system, having come from the Kuiper Belt long ago, later being gravitationally captured by Neptune. The first surprise that Voyager 2 discovered was the presence of a rarefied atmosphere around Triton. The cloud layer above the moon is approximately 100 kilometers thick. Measurements have shown that the atmosphere is predominantly nitrogen, with small inclusions of methane and carbon monoxide. Strikingly, its pressure, which was about 19 microbars when measured by Voyager 2, has increased significantly according to 2010 data and now varies from 40 to 65 microbars. The mechanism behind this phenomenon remains unclear. What can be said about the surface of Triton? It's very unusual. To understand this, Voyager 2 needed just the one short meeting with the celestial body. There are 12 types of terrain on the moon, from chains of craters and strange potholes to vast plains and cryovolcanoes. The image presented here shows dark spots, the consequences of the cryovolcano eruptions. Near the equator, the probe found an interesting object, similar in contour and structure to a frozen lake roughly a kilometer deep. You can see here that there's a small impact crater on its surface. Such formations may indicate that liquid has existed on Triton for centuries. The moon resembles a huge piece of ice with a diameter of 2,706 kilometers. The temperature on the surface reaches an incredible minus 235 degrees Celsius, which makes this body the coldest in the entire solar system. It's so frosty that even nitrogen falls in the form of frost and snow on the mountain slopes and valleys of the mysterious moon. 
during the visit to Triton, its polar cap was revealed to be truly huge and covered a significant part of the southern hemisphere. According to the data obtained, it consists of a mixture of nitrogen ice, methane, and carbon monoxide. Another important question, how is this hemisphere cratered? Voyager 2 discovered only 179 craters, while on Miranda, which is just 3% the size of Triton, 835 of them were recorded. This is in conjunction with the fact, as mentioned earlier, that serious geoactivity is indicated on this Neptunian satellite. Additionally, the interplanetary probe discovered something unusual and mystical on Triton, namely, a surface that's not found anywhere else in the solar system. This is cantaloupe terrain, or melon peel terrain. What provoked the formation of such a strange relief pattern? This location is considered the oldest on Triton. The area is completely covered with huge structures up to 50 kilometers in diameter with rather smooth and high edges. Surprisingly, the funnels are characterized by a pronounced curvature, in contrast to the clear forms of standard craters. There are many theories as to the origin of such a relief, and one of them claims that its origin is associated with very powerful cryovolcanic emissions that periodically flooded this area, melting the icy crust. Later, it's theorized the substance hardened and cracked. Cryovolcanoes are an unusual phenomenon from the point of view of orthodox science. Their appearance is possible only under conditions of extremely low temperatures, when mountains erupt and instead of molten rocks, spew water, nitrogen, and other substances in both liquid and gaseous states. These Voyager 2 images show one of these eruptions 45 minutes apart. In the blurred image, a plume of particles can be seen rising up to 8 kilometers and drifting with the wind for a distance of about 150 kilometers. But where is enormous Neptune, which should be reigning supreme in the skies of Triton? The probe did thankfully capture this image of the blue planet. Here you can see what the gas giant looks like from the surface of the moon. It even shows the global hurricane known as the Great Dark Spot. The Voyager 2 probe succeeded in the impossible. The images it sent allowed scientists to create a relatively detailed topographic map of the distant moon's terrain. In particular, the following 10-kilometer resolution image helped tremendously in achieving this goal. But, alas, all things come to an end sooner or later, and so the fruitful mission of the probe inevitably came to its conclusion. Throwing a farewell glance at Triton, the apparatus literally flew away into the distance and night. If you look at this picture impartially, you might think that we're not facing the icy moon of Neptune, but our very own satellite. As you may know, Voyager 2 also carried on board a golden plate with recordings of human speech, the roar of volcanoes, the whisper of ocean surf, the voices of birds and animals, as well as playback of famous musical passages. But on Triton, apparently there's no one to hear these magical sounds, although astronomers do suggest the presence of a subglacial ocean on Triton, similar to the one that probably splashes under the crust of the Jovian satellite Europa. According to assumptions, Triton's subglacial ocean's temperature doesn't exceed minus 97 degrees Celsius, and it consists mainly of water and nitrogen. And it's true that in such a harsh reservoir, it's unlikely that life, at least as we know and understand it, could have originated there. Meanwhile, Voyager 2 is still continuing its journey through the inky darkness of space, and we should think on the following. If Earthlings don't organize missions to Triton in the near future, then after some while, due to the tidal influence of Neptune, 
the moon will gradually approach the planet, having reached the Roche limit, and will inevitably collapse down onto its gaseous parent planet. The moon will be torn apart, and a system of rings will appear around Neptune, several orders of magnitude more epic than those of Saturn. It will be quite a show. In this case, Voyager 2 will remain the first and only device to visit Triton at the outskirts of the solar system. If you want more videos on similar topics, tell us about it in the comments and click the like button so we understand that you like the content and will produce more informative mini films like this. And click on the bell, share the video with your friends and let them also journey to unknown worlds with the Hubble Channel. Take a look at the screenshots that are now on the screen. These are statistics from YouTube. What does this mean? Notice, now 57% of viewers of this channel are watching without a subscription. Therefore, in order not to miss Hubble videos, you just need to click on the red button, which looks like this. It's below this video. The law of the universe is simple. Remember that. After all, each of your subscriptions is very important to me. The more viewers, the more often they watch and like, the faster a new mega-interesting video will come out.